Hello again. Well, yeah. How's it going, guys? Garrett's tired. I'm very tired, but I'm here. Wake up, Garrett. But where are we? <sighs> We're here. We're here for Tutor. I hardly know where the podcast about tutors and other things about tutors and tutors and tutors and tutors. I am one of your hosts, Garrett. I am another host, Emily. And I am not a host, Jeffrey. Jeffrey, are not a, a host. host. Eh, I'm here. And then there's Jeff. I'm Jeff, and I'm third. <laughs> Aw, poor Chloe. I feel like you end up talking way more than I do. It depends on the topic. Yeah. Yep. I uh, keep track of who talks the most. Weirdly, Tetra wins. <laughs> um, hey, guys. Hello. You ready? Hi. We're going to talk something tutors related, I'm assuming. Uh, no, actually. Today, I wanted to switch gears completely, and we're going to talk about France. Ooh. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I want some escargot. Um, we. Oui. Okay. I have a really interesting topic today, and this is a person whose name I heard and have mentioned quite a few times, but it wasn't until somebody actually asked me to do an episode on her that I was like, yes, let's do an episode on her. Are you ready? Yes. Let's do it. There once was a woman named Elizabeth Cavendish. Is her. this a limerick? Nope. And she also loved her horse radishes? Yes. Um, her name was also Elizabeth Talbot, the Countess of Shrewsbury. And she's commonly known as Bess of Hardwick. Welcome to At Midnight. Oh, God. <laughs> um, <laughs> so when I was looking her up, one article on her is just titled A Tudor Success Story. So before re researching, I just assumed that she just survived without having her head cut off. Um, <laughs> That's usually a success for anyone. <laughs> you have natural causes? <laughs> Holy shit. Way to go. Good job. Very yeah. nice. Give a round of applause yeah. for Bess of Hardwick. Yeah. All um, right, girl. You go. But also another another article was titled, Schemer, Social Climber, Scourge of Elizabeth I. So this is going to be a real fucking good one. Oh, my God. So it sounds like a, like a um, soap opera totally like a fucking soap opera like the only thing missing is a mustachioed twin um <laughs> she had that she could have had that no. okay <laughs> she had twin with a goatee <laughs> okay so i like, am your twin brother dun 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 why are you french <laughs> and i'm pregnant with your child wait what Ugh. Like most Tudor women, we aren't sure of the year of her birth, let alone a birth date. But we do know it was sometime between 1521 and 1527. So she's either <laughs> going to be 17 or 23. Um, yeah. So another fun... Uh, <laughs> do you want to know how we guess her age? Because she was taken to court and she mentioned in court that she was of tender years. When she married her first husband. Like, I guess tender years is like the Tudor equivalent of four always, score, I, which is... It's confused when people can't figure out when they're born, just for the sake of like, not once did they ever mention their age at any time in their life. Well, I mean, maybe... I feel like ages didn't really matter as much back then, did uh, they? No. Not, not the actual numerics, but... Well, not... yeah, it did because of a uh, reason, like, they, they couldn't get married until they were a certain age and... It's just a bad so one. Apparently, it's like mattered, six. But, <laughs> it kind of mattered, but usually it was that this shit wasn't recorded in something that stood the test of time. Like, nobody was mm. going to keep a document from a parish church from a small little place. Like, it doesn't fucking matter to them. <laughs> so, um... They, they don't even know. <laughs> so, sometime in the reign of Henry VIII, she was born. Um... Oh, F <laughs> this made me laugh. Her Wikipedia article talks about some of her heritage. Like, she was related to so-and-so who came over in 1300s, but it's titled Origins, so that totally makes it sound like she's going to get some superpowers later on. <laughs> What's her origin story? Yeah. She was need... bitten by a radioactive tutor. <laughs> and at the end, <laughs> Sam Jackson shows up and says, I'd like to join the tutor initiative. <laughs> Everybody just has axes. <laughs> Okay, so we don't know much about her childhood because she was a woman, um, but she did have one brother and four sisters, and then her mother later remarried another guy after her dad died. There are a lot of dead men in this. It's like making up for the rest of Tudor period with all the dead men. Um, but her dad died, so her mother remarried, and she had two additional half-sisters. However, none of them are really important. Um, now, this is where it is important. Elizabeth 
Bess was fucking awesome. She married four fucking times. <laughs> and none of her Damn. husbands beheaded her. So the first time she got she married. She was on a track record for Henry. Right. So the first time she married was in 1543. That was the year Henry got married for the fifth time. <laughs> um, Gotta play catch up. Right. And she married a 13-year-old named Robert Barley. Just How old was she? She would have been between 16 and 22. Oh, you go, girl. I know. Robbing those cradles. Um, however, Robert pulled a Prince Arthur, and he died really shortly after they got married, and they didn't live together as husband and wife. So <laughs> um, there were no, no, no dirty business happening with them. Initially... Bess was refused her dower rights, which is basically the money they get for being widowed really quickly. Um, similar to Catherine of Aragon. God, can you imagine being married to a 13-year-old? No. I hate 13-year-olds. <laughs> like, I I jokingly, but some, but sometimes realistically, threaten to send my kids when they become teenagers to live with my brother. Because, <laughs> I mean... Love Uncle Will, but also he's a state trooper and he was in the army, so not dealing with any of that teenage bullshit. But God, like the pimply, like I'm just imagining a pocket protecting. So Arthur wearing... from Spanish Princess. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> um, oh, but <laughs> so she wasn't awarded her dower rights, but she was done with people's bullshit, and she went to court and fought for it. Remember, she would have been between 16 and 22 at this point. Um, so she went to court and was like, I'm done with y'all's bullshit. Give me what I deserve. So she was awarded her claim on the Barley Estates and given compensation for marrying a 13-year-old. Ew. Um, it's kind of a consultation prize. Like, uh, Ladies and gentlemen of the court, come on. <laughs> <laughs> come on. He was such a dweeb. And that was the first recorded word use of the word dweeb. Um, uh, here was an interesting fact, mostly because I really like this woman's name. It's possible. Oh God, hold on. It's possible that she served in the household of a woman named Anne Gainsford, Lady Zoosh. Um, and, excuse me. Was it like song with a list trying to say Zeus? No, it was Lady Zoosh. <laughs> Lady Zoosh. Um, but that woman served in the household of Anne Boleyn. I just thought it was really interesting. Didn't really have anything to do with the story. I just, <laughs> anything to do with Anne Boleyn and also the name Lady Zoosh. Um, the mighty Zoosh. <laughs> I am the mighty Zoosh. So in August 1547, a, um, Bess decided that she was, uh, not done with some social climbing. So she married one William Cavendish who was the treasurer of the king's chamber had once been a and had once been a henchman of Thomas Cromwell so she became lady cavendish um how much older do you guys think he was than her older yeah. oh man so she's going the opposite now yeah um so she would probably have been at this point um, then we're saying roughly around mid 20s then most likely mm -hmm. so i'm going to say he was 40 Yes, he was twice her age. Yeah, and he had two children. She's like already. you know what, the 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 kid didn't work out. Let's try a man. <laughs> Let's try extreme difference. Um, now, luckily, William was wealthy as fuck because when Henry VIII was like, "Get rid of the monasteries," William Cavendish was like, "I'll take some of the sweet land." So he did. Um, she suggested he sell that land, and they moved to Derbyshire and build a place called Chatsworth. Um. And so he did do that. Uh, she kind of became known for building a lot of shit. Like, she was really into architecture, apparently. Um, interestingly, the buildings that they built, the, the buildings that they owned, they owned jointly. So it wasn't William owned it and she lived there. It was the house of William and Bess. Oh, fuck, huh. that sounds awesome. Huh. So, yeah, she was already making herself unique how in did, the Tudor How did she time. swing that? Fucked if I know. Maybe she was really good in bed. Um, Baby, you should you should totally put my name on this. <laughs> yeah, okay, honey. I don't know. I don't go to bed. Um, but then he died. Like I said, lots of dead men. Um, and she, <laughs> she wakes up in bed one morning, tries to roll him over. He's <laughs> dead. She goes, fuck! <laughs> it's going Do so this shit again. It's going so well until he died. 
Um, they were married for 10 years, and they had eight children. Oh, um, holy shit. Wow. But when he died, she was still left in a lot of debt. Um, Shouldn't have built all those houses, idiot. <laughs> well, she decided she didn't want to be in debt, and also she understood that <laughs> moving up the social ladder was nice. So she got married for a third time in 1559. She married a w- man named Sir William St. Lowe, and she, so she became Lady St. Lowe. Um, he was captain of the guard to Elizabeth I and, never knew of this title before, Chief Butler of England. What do you think he does? He buttled. Thank you. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think a chief, chief butler of England does? Um, what was the role of the one guy in down, Downton Abbey who was like just in charge of all the butlers and maids? So is he in charge of every butler in England? Maybe that sounds he, right. Maybe he did, the, <laughs> he did the hiring process. Okay. The, <laughs> he the, made sure that other people were making sure that the king was taken care of. Um... Okay. The Chief Butler of England is an office of Grand Sergeanty associated with the feudal manor of Kenning Hall in Norfolk. The office requires service to be provided to the monarch at the coronation, in this case the service of Prince Sarah Regis or Chief Butler at the Yeah, he was a chief he buttled. <laughs> he was just a really good butler. Apparently. He was like Alfred Pennyworth. He was. It's interesting. The current... So he helps take care of your house and keep your secret as, as Batman. Uh, the, the current chief butler is Edward Fitzalan Howard, the 18th Dor- Duke of Norfolk. Huh. Hmm. Anyway, he was the chief butler, and so she was Mrs. Chief Butler. <laughs> so as Mrs. Chief Butler, um, she was... Actually, she was called Lady Cavendish. Um, no, wait. I'm a liar. She was Lady St. Lowe. Sorry, I lost my place. He was a solid choice for a husband because he convinced his buddy Elizabeth to lower Bess's debt by half, and then he paid it off completely. <laughs> so he was like a Tudor sugar daddy, which, how do I get one? Sorry, Jeff. I got student loans. How do I pay? How do I convince the country to lower my debt by half? Oh, honey. Shut up. Elizabeth Warren for president. Um, 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 Oh, yeah. So that was fine for like five years. And then he died. Again. Again. So he, so he died under... Sus- at this point, she just looks at the camera. <laughs> just gives a nice little so, side eye. Just, so mm. here's some soap opera twists for you. He died under suspicious circumstances. So it's suspected that he was poisoned by his younger brother. <laughs> But the younger brother didn't get the bulk of his estates. Bess got everything. (laughs) So I'm just imagining this hot Beverly Hills wife who keeps marrying these old men near death and then convincing them to change their wills. And so she's like this evil stepmom, but she's also kind of cool. So you're like, I hate you for taking everything, but also I love you. Um... Now, his death made her the wealthiest, one of the wealthiest women in the country. Um, When she died, she was, no, wait, at one point she was only, the only person wealthier than her was Queen Elizabeth. So her her annual income equated to, in modern, in modern money, what do you think she made annually? 20 mil. Close. Wow. 18. Jesus. Yeah. So, um, she was also a lady of the bedchamber to Queen Elizabeth, so that really worked out for her, but of course, can't live in a women, or can't live with all these women and not have some danger. There was drama. Um, do you guys remember when we talked about the Grey Sisters and how they kept marrying men without asking Elizabeth's permission? Vaguely. Vaguely. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well... Catherine Gray married somebody without permission, and she confessed to Bess about her secret marriage. Well, Bess was like, the fuck? I was just sitting here. I don't want to know your dirty little secrets. Um, So she was kind of pissed that she was pulled pulled into the drama slash treason. Um, Elizabeth found out, and she was like, what the fuck, Bess? You didn't tell me? Um, (laughs) So she was sent to, she and Catherine were sent to the tower, um, 
though eventually Elizabeth did release Bess, but she lost her position as Lady of the Bedchamber. So that's what you get for gossiping, guys. Um, so at this point, she was in her late 30s, but she was still a hottie. So there were a lot of guys vying for her attention. And she was like, I'm going to play this up. And she married the best one she could get, who was George Talbot, the sixth Earl of Shrewsbury. So she became the Countess of Shrewsbury. Um, and they had a happy marriage. Just kidding. They did it. Shrewsbury? Yeah, Shrewsbury. What the heck's a Shrewsbury? Uh-huh. Some in England. That tastes them. like Shrewsberries. Yeah. Shrewsberries taste like Shrewsberries. <laughs> he had plenty of children, so... Oh, oh, God, I forgot about this. So he had a lot of children, and she had a lot of children, and so they married their kids to each other. Yours, mine, and ours? Yes. Um, one of her sons married one of his daughters, and one of his sons married one of her daughters. The only thing worth mentioning is that his son was 18 and her daughter was eight. Hey, Marsha. Yeah, Greg. Yeah, Greg. Here's like, a story of a fucked up family. Yep. <laughs> All right. So here's where Bess gets pulled into political intrigue. So Queen Mary of Scotland was forced to abdicate and was like, hey, cuz, can I hang out with you? Because people are trying to kill me. And Elizabeth was like, yes, except now you're my prisoner. So, um... Mary was placed under house arrest under the custody of the Earl of Shrewsbury and Bess. Um, so for 15 years, she was shuffled between their estates. Then Elizabeth was like, also, you guys have to pay for her. So um, don't know what the fuck that was about besides like just, I don't feel like paying. Um, it was recorded that Mary would use the couples in, I'm fucking copying and pasting at this point. It was recorded that Mary would use the couple's insecurities against each other, even convincing Talbot, the Earl, that Bess was stealing. So all of this led to them not really liking each other anymore, and then Mary continued to make it worse while also playing besties with Bess. Like, they would work on tapestries and shit together. They'd be, like, sewing together. (laughs) Tapestry club. And Mary would be gossiping and spreading all this bullshit, so... (laughs) <laughs> um, but the I, thing I, I is, I visualize like, like those like, women would be all hanging out at like the hairdresser, all like in a row. They're yes. all they're all just like sewing tapestries while talking y- about. Like, yes. Would you believe what I just heard about so and so? Oh my god. So, but the thing is, it wasn't just Mary trying to fuck things up between Bess and her husband. It was Mary being like, "Hey, Elizabeth, Bess is saying some shit about you." So there was a scandal letter that Mary wrote to Queen Elizabeth in 1584, and she told. Elizabeth that Bess was laughing at the notion that Elizabeth was a virgin claiming that she was so insatiable that she'd seduced a host of men but then Mary also really sucked at making up stories because later on she said that um, Bess had quoted or Bess had said Elizabeth was not like other women and incapable of having sex so she's a lusty hoe but also got no vag so i don't know what yeah mary was just mary, mary was messed up so um, was this in mary queen of scots the movie or no <laughs> no it was not um well it should have been but part of the reason mary didn't like Bess is because <sighs> part of the reason mary didn't like Bess was because Bess also had her own dynastic intentions on the throne of england mary was like this is my throne. Elizabeth's full of shit. And she's a bastard. I should have it. And also, I don't like you because you want it. So I'll get to that in just a minute and how that happened. Um, Mary, Queen of Scots, was eventually moved into the custody of somebody else. Um, and that was before she was involved in the situation that got her beheaded. So that probably saved Bess some drama. Um, <laughs> Bess, Bess was sick of her husband and of Mary. So she spread rumors that they had an affair. Um, even though she admitted making it up later, it's still often repeated. Um, and so her husband ended up dying again. Wait, they all died? No, the Earl of Shrewsbury died. Yeah, he huh. died. Not because of the rumor. No, no, no. Sorry, all, bad all segue. Her husbands? All of her husbands. Jesus. Four husbands. So she's a black widow. Um, Yes. <laughs> Oh, her name is Natasha. So she <laughs> was she's brought into the uh, Tudor the initiative. initiative. <laughs> so she was the Dowager Countess, and at this point, she's wealthy as fuck, and she's a Dowager Countess, so she's done getting married. Um, also, it was 1590, and she was getting old. So 
Okay, here's the interesting Tudor connection. And I'm sorry, guys, this is a little complicated. So Bess had a daughter. And there's this woman, the Countess of Lennox, who had a son. The Countess of Lennox was Margaret Tudor's daughter. So the Countess of Lennox was Elizabeth I's cousin. So her son was like a first cousin once removed. I think that's how it works. Okay. So he had a claim to the throne. Bess arranged a marriage with that son, Charles. Interestingly, Charles was the brother of Lord Darnley, the guy who married Queen Mary, Queen of Mary, Queen of Scots, who was then exploded and strangled to death. If you guys remember that. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Um, but Bess and the Countess of Lennox did not go to Elizabeth for permission, who obviously would have said no because she didn't want her throne threatened. And she was like, uh, I said, no, this is fucking treason. So she sent her cousin to the tower. Not the son, the cousin. Okay. The, okay. Bess was called to London. They're like, there's there's something fishy going on. You got to come here. We got to talk about it. There's an official inquiry. You want to get over here real quick? Be- Bess was like, nah. And she didn't come and was like, it'll blow over. And somehow it fucking did. So she didn't get reprimanded for completely ignoring the uh, the summons to, to London to answer for treason. So the two people who'd married had had a child, Arbella. And we've talked about Arbella Stewart before. It was a while ago. Mm-hmm. Um, Arbella stayed with her grandmother most of the time. And, her, and Bess was like, she's going to be the queen. I'm going to make her the queen. This is going to be awesome. And that's what Mary Queen of Scots had issues with. Okay. She was like, nobody else is queen. I am. Um. So <laughs> Bess was like, no, honey, you have to be the queen. In fact, I'm going to imprison you to keep you from getting eloped with somebody who I don't approve of. Um, it didn't work. Arabella, Arabella ran away to get married to somebody else who had a claim to the throne. Fucking everybody had a claim to the throne at this point. I have a claim to the throne. Technically. How many people we got claim to the throne anyway? Everybody. Yo. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. I'm surrounded by claimants. Um, Bess gave up and asked Elizabeth, she, she got fucking sick of her daughter, of her granddaughter. So she begged Elizabeth, she's like, could you please take her off my hands? I'm just sick of just, her. Just execute her, please. Um, it, just toss her into one of the <laughs> other groups you got going on that day. They ended up. We got plenty others. <laughs> just put her in the lineup. Um, <laughs> Elizabeth and Bess ended up reconciling. So treason was completely forgotten. Oh, interesting fact. Queen Elizabeth II is a direct descendant of Bess of Hardwick. Really? Mm-hmm. Um, but, so, Bess had done all this badass shit, and then she died. Uh, February 1608, she was about 81 years old. Which is fucking old for back then. Okay. 81's the old for now. That's is pretty damn impressive. Yep. So, um, she's remembered for quite a few things, but specifically Hardwick Hall. She, like I mentioned earlier, she really liked building stuff, and... There's like a ditty or a poem known about Hardwick Hall. It's Hardwick Hall, more glass than wall because of how many windows it had, which think back to then, that would have been fucking expensive. (laughs) Um, And then she had willed everything in Hardwick Hall to like the community or something like that. And so there's this huge collection currently available like that where you can go and see. Um, And it's all of this tapestry and artwork and books and stuff like that from Bess's life. And so there's actually pieces that Mary Queen of Scots had worked on That's in this sounds, collection. That's crazy wow. that this person... Fucking awesome. I mean, I can't believe she was, she was widowed four times till, before right? she died. Right? That's why she's the most successful woman of the Tudor era. Sorry, Elizabeth. You lose. You were a queen. You had to, you had to step up. That's crazy that also all her husbands just died like they did. It wasn't, it wasn't like, oh, one of them was arrested and executed. Mysterious poisoning. Oh, dear. Who do y'all? Um, so that is Bess of Hardwick. Okay. And we're done. That was the best episode ever. Yep. There were none better. That's the end. Wah, wah. We can't do any Don't more. Don't listen to the others. Yeah, no. No, do listen to the others. We're <laughs> fucking funny, guys. Go back and listen you to all of them. Mm, Garrett's tired. We're all uh, yawning all of here. Stay. Baby's sleepy. She is not sleep, actually. Oh my god. Uh-huh. We're all just going Getting back and forth cry. yawning. 
It's infectious. Um, no, so no, nothing more exciting than hearing your own podcast, people yawn. <laughs> My favorite thing is that when I was pregnant and sleeping all the time, but before I told anybody I was pregnant, I was yawning and I read one of our reviews and it was like, the host seems so bored by her own topic. She won't stop yawning. <laughs> I was like, uh, sorry guys. There's a human being sucking up all my energy. Yay! Um, so that's that. That's that's best of Hardwick. This is a requested episode, and I want to thank the person who requested it. But I don't didn't write their name down. So, person, if you well, requested uh, this, thank you. You look it up, and in the meantime, I'm gonna oh, shuck and jive. Fuck. Hey, if you didn't know, we've got social media platforms that you can follow us on. We've got Facebook. Follow us at Tutor I Hardly Know Her. We've got Twitter. Follow us at Tutor Know Her. Or email us, tutornoher at gmail.com. That was so sensual. Thank you. I'm turned Hey, on. you want me to get real sensual with it? Ooh. <clears throat> hey, um, you may not know this yet, but we've got oh. a, a Patreon. Oh, God. Talk about that Patreon. Yeah, so we, la- we launched a Patreon not too long ago. And thank you to everyone who's contributing so far. Again, if you contribute... Thank you so much. It's it, it means the world to us. And if you can't contribute or don't want to contribute, don't worry about it. It's okay. You're still going to get the podcast like normal. But here's what you can get if you do uh, sign up for our Patreon. At one dollar, just just the the least you can you can donate. You get access to all of our bonus episodes, including commentaries, uh, extra episodes that aren't quite tutor related, and other stuff like that. For five dollars or more, you can join me, Jeff, and Emily in a Q and A session. Get a shout out on each episode at the very end or beginning. We don't know where we're doing that yet, and access to our bonus episodes. For fifteen dollars more, or for fifteen dollars a month or more, you're a cup bearer. You can join Emily's Tutor Book Club, where I what was the book you were talking about doing? Black Tutors, an untold story. Black Tutors, an untold story. I mean, we might already be in the middle of that right now. But anyway, and then you get everything below that as well. And then finally, at $50 or more, you are a sponsor of the show. You get an ad, any copy, you want to promote a podcast or yourself or just a business, whatever. You can sponsor through us. You guys, somebody just shared this on our page and I didn't see this. I think there's a game about being Henry Oh, yeah, I shared that. What is it? Yeah, Garrett posted that. I saw that okay. this morning. So, okay, let me let me get to this. Um, also, the hurdy gurdy. <laughs> yeah, the hurdy gurdy gurdy was hilarious. Thank you to um, whoever tagged us in that. I, again. All right, so there's a game coming out in September called Fit for a King. It looks like a very old, like Zelda late type. '80s, early '90s, like PC game. It's very, very uh, old looking. But, um, what is the um, I'm going to read the description on the game's page on Steam because it's hilarious. Marry everything. Execute everything. Spend it all. Live the (laughs) ultimate fantasy in this Henry VIII simulator and humiliate France with your wealth and excess or die trying. (laughs) Who's going to stop you? God? Nope. You're also the Pope. (laughs) I I want it so bad. (laughs) Check out the trailer if you haven't. It's pretty funny. I'm going to play it. um, your consort tells you that the people think you're a monster. Is this likely because of A, deeds you have actually done, or B, a poorly crafted public image? <laughs> Lots of choices. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> the players, King Hank, Consort Annie, King Frank. Consort <laughs> Annie. <laughs> um, also, guys, if you're looking for something, if you want to take up a musical instrument but aren't sure of your musical skills, buy the Build Your Own Hurdy Gurdy set. <laughs> For the low cost of four hundred dollars, <laughs> you can build your own hurdy gurdy. I think we should get one, guys. Oh, good. Okay. Because now apparently we're rolling all this Patreon money. Can't you tell? Oh yeah. <laughs> all right. If we if how much is a hurdy gurdy? Like four hundred and eighty bucks. <laughs> okay. If we start making four hundred and eighty bucks a month on Patreon, <laughs> I will buy a hurdy gurdy and I will play it live on the podcast. <laughs> Uh, okay, you have to learn green sleeves on the hurdy gurdy. Oh my god. Hurdy gurdy, hurdy gurdy. Okay, sorry. Guys. Just do a cover of Billy Joel's Piano Man, except it's the hurdy gurdy man. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
sing us a s- <laughs> sing us a song. You're, You're the, the hurdy gurdy man. man. <laughs> Thanks, Weird Al. All right, this has gone on too long. Until next time. <laughs> Until next time. <laughs> Until next time. Divorce beheaded died. Divorce beheaded survived. survived. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye.